All right, so today we're diving into a world that's, well, a little bit niche. Niche is an understatement, right? Maybe, but fascinating nonetheless. Mm -hmm. We're talking about electric unicycles, but not those little ones you see zipping around sidewalks. No, no, these are serious machines. We're talking high speeds, custom builds, a whole subculture of enthusiasts. Exactly. And our source material this time around is pure gold for this. A transcript from PEV Livestream, hashtag 99. Hosted by Duff, of course, he always manages to pull in some interesting characters. He really does. In this one, he's chatting with Roger, a builder and racer who pushes these EUCs to their absolute limits. And then there's Dale. He's always got a story. Or 10. Oh, yeah. Dale's a character. But before we get too far, let's lay some groundwork. So we're talking about electric unicycles, EUCs for short. One wheel, self-balancing, surprisingly powerful. And surprisingly fast. Roger actually talks about hitting 55 miles per hour on a new master straight out of the box. Which kind of blows the whole slow commuter vehicle stereotype out of the water. These things are capable of some serious speed. 55 miles per hour on one wheel just seems intense. What drives that need for speed? It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, no doubt, but it's more than that. It's about pushing boundaries, both personal and technological, seeing how far they can take these machines. So it's about the tech as much as the thrill. Absolutely. These guys, they geek out over battery specs, charger hacks, custom firmware. It's a whole other level of tinkering. They even had a whole debate about 50E versus 50S batteries. I have to admit, I got a little lost there. It's all about power delivery and range. Think of it like this. A 50E might give you more distance, while a 50S could give you a quicker burst of speed. And for these guys, those little differences can make or break a race or a speed run. Exactly. It's not enough to just ride. They want to understand the mechanics to fine-tune every aspect of their EUC. So, half rider, half engineer. It seems to come with the territory. This DIY ethos is deeply ingrained in EUC culture. It's not just a hobby, it's a passion project. And some of those projects get pretty wild. They're building custom parts, modifying pedals. They'll tear these things apart and rebuild them from the ground up just to squeeze out that extra little bit of performance. It's impressive, really. But what about those who aren't, you know, engineering masterminds? Where does the everyday EUC rider fit into all this? There's still that culture of self-reliance. They're constantly sharing tips online, troubleshooting each other's problems. Like that whole hot glue thing they were talking about? <gasps> right. Who knew hot glue was the secret to EUC maintenance? But it speaks to their ingenuity and willingness to experiment. It's like they form their own little society with their own language, their own inside jokes. Speaking of language, did you notice their uh, unique term of endearment? You mean cunt. Yeah, that caught me a little off guard. Is that dot common in the EUC world? Surprisingly, yes. Within the context of this community, it takes on a different meaning. More of a playful, ironic term of camaraderie. So not meant to be offensive. Right. It's all about context. And it speaks to their comfort level with each other, the shared identity built around pushing boundaries. Not just with EUCs, but with language, too. Okay, so pushing boundaries with EUCs, pushing boundaries with language. Mm -hmm. Where do the actual boundaries come in? Yeah. I imagine safety and legal issues come up a lot with this kind of thing. All the time. It's this constant tension with any emerging technology. EUCs don't fit neatly into existing categories, which creates a gray area legally. Yeah, like that Key Biscayne ban they mentioned, <sighs> where writing EUCs was briefly outlawed. Thankfully, it was overturned quickly, but it highlights the vulnerability of this community. They're navigating a world that hasn't quite caught up with their chosen mode of transportation. And sometimes that navigation leads to some pretty hairy situations. They were talking about a near miss in Miami traffic. And that story about the writer who accidentally ended up on the Golden Gate Bridge. Wait, what? Accidentally? How do but you accidentally end up on the Golden Gate Bridge on an EUC? He was riding with a group, got separated, and next thing you knew, he's cruising alongside cars on one of the most iconic bridges in the world. Now that's a story for the grandkids. But it does make you think about the risks associated with this hobby. Is it all adrenaline for these riders? Not necessarily. Remember, they're passionate about exploring the capabilities of EUCs, and that often means pushing their own limits as well. They're pioneers, in a sense, navigating this uncharted territory of alternative transportation which actually explains a lot. It's not just recklessness. It's this sense of discovery, of pushing boundaries that seems woven into the fabric of EUC culture. But it's not all high speeds and close calls, right? They seem to genuinely care about each other, too. 
That's one of the more surprising things revealed in this live stream. It really is. You wouldn't expect a group so focused on pushing limits to have this softer side. And it's not just about being there for a broken axle or a dead battery. They celebrate each other's wins, big and small. Like Don's 120 mile full moon ride. 120 miles on one wheel. My knees ache just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. But it speaks to their dedication, their passion for this. It's more than just a hobby for them. It's a lifestyle. And like any good lifestyle choice, it comes with its fair share of drama. You mean like the Godzilla photo incident? Oh, yeah, that whole thing was wild. Well, Someone posts a seemingly harmless photo online, and suddenly the entire EUC community is up in arms. It's like a microcosm of the Internet itself, but it highlights this interesting dynamic. They're figuring out their own social norms, their own boundaries. It makes you wonder how much of the subculture is shaped by those online interactions. Because they're not just writing together, they're sharing their experiences, their knowledge. Exactly. And that's where someone like Roger comes in. His viral video, the one where he's practically flying down that mountain path, it completely changed the game. That video was insane. I think he even convinced a few people I know to try an EUC. His channel blew up overnight. He became the accidental spokesperson for the entire EUC world. Just by being himself, really. And that's what makes this so fascinating. It's this weird intersection of tech, passion, and community. And that's what makes this whole deep dive so compelling. It is, isn't it? You've got these incredible individuals pushing the limits of what's possible on these machines. But then at the same time, they're incredibly supportive of each other, sharing tips, celebrating each other's successes. Exactly. Remember they talked about those group rides, those epic journeys they go on together? Oh, yeah, like riding 120 miles in a full moon night. 120 miles? I barely walk that far. It shows the kind of camaraderie you don't see in a lot of places. It's this shared experience that bonds them together. And then there's that whole Godzilla photo incident. Oh, don't even get me started on the Godzilla photo. It just goes to show, even in a community as niche as this, you're still going to have your drama. But it's that passion, that intensity that makes it all so interesting. They care deeply about this stuff. And that passion is contagious, too. Remember Roger's viral video? The one that launched a thousand EUCs? Oh, absolutely. That video single-handedly put EUCs on the map for a lot of people. It's amazing how one person's passion can resonate with so many others. And that's what it all boils down to, isn't it? Passion. Whether it's for speed, for technology, for community, or just for the pure joy of writing, these EUC enthusiasts have got it in spades. And they're not afraid to share it with the world, which is honestly pretty refreshing. So for anyone out there who thought electric unicycles were just for, you know, quirky commuters. Think again. <laughs> There's a whole world of innovation, adventure, and yes, even a little bit of drama just waiting to be explored. And who knows, maybe this deep dive has inspired a few of you to give it a try. Just maybe. And if you do, watch out for that Godzilla photo. And whatever you do, don't forget your hot glue gun. You never know when you might need it. Until next time, keep exploring and keep those wheels turning.